when you start out by spreading goodwill, you have to remember that universal goodwill doesn't come naturally to us. It's easy to have goodwill for people you like, people who've done nice things to you, or the people you love. But it's also very easy to have ill will for people who've done things that you really don't like, or have harmed you, harmed the people you love. That's why goodwill has to start with heedfulness. You think about the fact that if you act on ill will, it's going to be bad for you. It's going to be bad karma down the line. So you have to give rise to it. That's your motivation. You don't worry about whether people deserve your goodwill or not, because that's not the issue. The issue is what kind of karma do you want to have? And then you remember what the Buddha said about how our emotions and our mind states are the product of three things. Bodily fabrication, verbal fabrication, mental fabrication. Bodily fabrication, of course, is the in and out breath. Verbal fabrication is how you talk to yourself. And then mental fabrication, and perceptions and feelings. And so to create a state of universal goodwill, you have to fabricate it out of these things. Learn to breathe in a way that's easy, that's comfortable, feels good to be here. And then start talking to yourself, reminding yourself of what's involved in goodwill. Basically, when you have goodwill for yourself, it means you hope that you will act in skillful ways. So it means the same thing for other people. You hope that they will act in skillful ways as well. And you should be able to think that thought for anybody, no matter what they've done in the past. It would be good if they could behave skillfully. Now, part of you may say, well, I'd like to see them suffer a little bit first, but what does that accomplish? Nothing much. In fact, people who suffer very rarely see that it's because of something they did. They accuse other people, other things. So we better all around if people could suddenly see the light and realize that they can't act on ill will for anybody at all. Then there's mental fabrication, your feelings, like you're trying to create a feeling of ease with the breath. And then your perceptions. The Buddha gives lots of perceptions to hold in mind. One is the perception of a mother protecting your child. You have to protect your goodwill. No matter what other people do, you're going to maintain your goodwill. Even if you have to die, you maintain your goodwill. Another image is of having goodwill like Earth. Earth is big and solid. No matter what people can try to do to destroy Earth, Earth is just too big for them. Or make your goodwill like space. People can say things. It's like trying to draw pictures or to draw words in space. There's nothing there for, to catch it. You want to make your state of mind such that you don't catch people's unskillful behavior. You hold these images in mind, and it's a lot easier to think of your goodwill not as being weak or wimpy, but as being strong and free. And if you hold those images in mind, it's a lot easier to maintain your goodwill. So goodwill is not just a matter of repeating, may everybody be happy, may everybody be happy. You have to think about it, and you have to think about the images you hold in mind to encourage goodwill. And that way you can create a state of goodwill for everybody, without any hypocrisy, without any conflict. This is how goodwill is based on your discernment, based on heedfulness, because you realize it's good for you and good for everybody else. <laughs>